Welcome into Locked On NFL Draft. Today is running back day, two from the great north, two from around the Midwest. And then we're going to get into a couple of guys that offer value at the running back position. We're going to get knee deep into it. Welcome to Locked On NFL Draft. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft. I'm your host, former NFL and NFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And of course, as always, I'm joined with my guy, Ryan Tracy. We want to thank you guys for making us your first listen of the day. Ryan, how are you doing, man? I'm listening. I'm listening to your show, the Niner show. I'm listening to mine every now and then. I try not to listen that much, but I'm excited because this is this is a topic. This is a controversial one, right? When we start to take a look at prospects, I've, I'm starting to get some actual film on, on teams that I don't get to see live. But this position is one we've talked about in the past, like what's the value, right? So I think right. the, the, the six guys that we're going to talk about today, I think kind of cover the gamut for me all the way from the top to guys that are going to be super value, and I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to start up north. Who's your first guy? I think Hassan Haskins, right? You know, we talk about just the big game he had against Ohio State, Mm -hmm. and that was the one game where I'm pretty sure everybody's watching. All eyes were on that game. And you see what he's doing, and and Michigan did a really good job of, one, controlling the clock, two, putting themselves in short yardage situations. But Hassan Haskins, he was a big part of that. And just how he was running and how he was able to kind of maneuver and set up blocks. I thought he did a terrific job doing that. He ran hard. It was cold weather, and he he didn't mind it. He didn't mind the contact. And I was wondering, I'm watching him, and, you know, we see him score five touchdowns and really kind of put Michigan's offense on his back. I'm like, man, where has this kid been? You look at his numbers right now, you know, 1,232 rushing yards, 18 touchdowns, five yards per, per carry. Mm-hmm. Then you look at his past because he is a red shirt junior. So I'm assuming he's a guy who's potentially going to come out. But as a red shirt junior, you look at before, and he didn't even have a 1,000 yards combined in the previous two seasons. Now, one year it looks like maybe he was injured, so he only had 375 yards on 61 carries. But big year, big breakout year for him, for the red shirt junior. And I think he's somebody that probably would benefit from – potentially being able to go to like, you know, the senior bowl if he if he's able to get an mm-hmm. invite. But the he looked like he's like NFL ready. You know, Michigan's offense is kind of set up that way where it's just this power, uh, you know, eye formation, power running running offense. He excelled in there, at least against Ohio State. I'm looking forward to see and more from him. But did, was there anything that kind of jumped out to you, you know, when watching his game and his style of running, maybe how it translates to the NFL? You know, that that translation is going to be the biggest obstacle for him, I think, because I think he is good at following a lead block. I think he understands where he's supposed to hit his marks. I do like him after contact as well. But how's he going to do it in a single set? And yeah. and like you said, the pass catching is probably a, a minus at this point. Um, maybe if I go back to two years past, like you said, this is a breakout season for him. So we'll have to go back and look at 20 and, lo- and look at 19 and see what's on there. But can you function and be a three down guy or are you really a, a first and second down back at this point? That's going to be the determining factor for me. And it, it probably makes it unless we see something really, really break out here in the last uh, you know, moments of the college season. We're going to have to see where that comes down. Is it a, a day two guy? Could he be a guy? you know, fourth, fifth, that is like super value. That's what he screams to me right now. But he's not the only one who doesn't catch a ton of passes. The running back from the opposite school up in Michigan as well. A lot of people know who Kenneth Walker is. 1,600 yards on the season. What's more important to me, over 1,100 of them have come after contact. Mm. That's the key for me. Like whether it's in the hole or at the linebacker level, when he breaks through a little bit, he can sustain through all kinds of contact. That's significant, but he also has only had, like, what, 18 catches or something like that for not much yardage at all. That's, 19. 19. Is it 19? And, and, and that's exactly <clears throat> the same amount as Hassan, uh, as Hassan as well. Hassan and Haskins. 19, and that's just 19%. the thing. Like, it's great to be a first-down workhorse. It's it, I feel like uh, like Walker hits the hole 
pretty quickly. I feel like he can he can get out of it when he needs to in terms of lateral agility. I like that about his game. But it is about the pass catching. Can you be more than just a two-down guy? That, I think, still remains to be seen. And, again, the Senior Bowl, I think, will be very important. Whatever post-All-Star game that he can get to. I think one thing that people will really point to for not not just – uh, Walker, like, but both of these guys, just to really con the contact, the contact balance, and you're gonna hear that a lot when people are talking about running backs. That's a a scouting term that's thrown out a lot now. Like, what's that contact balance like? You know, a guy, you know, if he's taking on contact, is he able to kind of spring off that, maybe spin off of the contact, but keep his balance? I was watching the game and saw a running back, dude. That oh, it was uh Gibson, the running back for the Washington football team. Mm -hmm. I saw that uh, Monday night where. He got grabbed in the backfield. He was able to spin out of that, go head up with a guy, bounce off of that tackle, and pick up a few more yards. They end up getting their first down. I believe that was on the fourth down in short situation. So the contact balance with both of these guys, I think that's one area where they would excel. But like you said, the pass catching aspect of it, that's huge in today's game. There is a running back that we'll be talking about a little bit later that excels in the passing game, but that wasn't something that was just a big time strength. Either one of these guys, we're talking about, again, you know, 19 – receptions in three years for both these guys that's not any you know game breaking ability from a pass catching standpoint now maybe people would say you know, they weren't asked to catch the ball a whole lot they can but they weren't asked to it wasn't part of their offense you know we talked about michigan and kind of what they've done you know and just that power offense eye formation that they do there's not a whole lot of passes to the running back they're not really spreading it out and you know singling up running back in space and really using him as a route runner. So that might be why, you know, at least, you know, Haskins is, isn't used as much in the passing game, but the NFL, that's definitely going to be something that people, they're going to value that because you're looking for that, especially if you want to be a three down back in the NFL in this day and age. Yeah, absolutely. And I think contact balance gets confused by a lot of people. These guys, we're talking about contact balance. We're going to talk about contact power, a la Kareem Hunt coming up. With the next pair of backs in particular after we get to this. Yeah, and what we're getting to right now, Bet Online has you covered for all this season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues to march to the playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head over right now to their new updated desktop and website uh, to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code locked on to receive that bonus from basketball, you know, NBA, college football, NHL, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of this amazing offer throughout the 2021 season for all sports. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. And I mean, again, speaking of talking about betting, I lost a couple hundred dollars on uh, <laughs> Ohio State. <laughs> Something told me don't do it. Jim Jim Harbaugh finally got that that boogeyman off his back. But if you are going to bet, bet online is the place to go, and it is where the games start. So let's get into some of these other running backs. Where 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 are we going with this now? It, let's go to the Midwest because the guy that stands out to me as kind of the antithesis of contact balance is contact power. And I like the way Brees Hall runs. I like the way that he actually delivers power to would-be tacklers. And this is also a guy that I think probably in terms of like total explosion uh, with the ball in his hand, he's probably behind definitely Walker and the next guy that we'll talk about out of Texas A&M. But I think Hall is, is a really nice combination of guy with what if 1,400 yards on the season. Again, a hefty amount of them, over 700 after contact. I think that's the key. That tells me that while he might not be the burner, we've seen guys like Nick Chubb, we've seen guys like Kareem Hunt that we talked about that aren't necessarily the fastest backs, but because they can survive contact, because they can run between small gaps, run for some power inside, like the nice, well-rounded game, I think that that's something that that he reflects of those pro backs. And of this group that we're talking about, he does have, I believe, the most receptions, uh, 37 on 41 targets. So whether he's used enough or not, he makes the most of those targets, and he catches well. Yeah, and, you know, when I watch him and we're talking about Brees Hall, you know, he reminded me a little bit of like a Trey Sermon. And you talked about, you know, you, you mentioned guys like Kareem Hunt, right? And that was kind of one of my comps for Trey Sermon. Obviously, I'm familiar with him 
being drafted, you know, third mm -hmm. round to the 49ers. And a lot of people are like, oh, man, that was a reach because you got Elijah Mitchell going crazy right now. <laughs> but Reese Hall, you, you know, you talked about him not being like a boner, but a boner, pause, uh, a burner. <laughs> but the one thing that was really, like, interesting to see is, like, his stride. He has a really good stride. Like, he opens up those legs. And it's interesting because for someone that is kind of built a little bit more compact, and is able to, you know, be that power guy. When he opens up his stride, it's pretty good. Now, again, he's not just a burner that's running away from guys. And we'll get to a couple guys that can run away from people. But I don't think, like, you know, especially when he goes to the combine, I don't think it's somebody that's going to just test horribly bad. I would like to see a little bit more agility from him, a little bit more, like, side to side, you know, elusiveness. One thing that I really like from running backs, and we'll talk about it with a couple guys later on, but just the ability to make a move on top of, move, of a move. And he didn't really have that. It was like, okay, I can put my foot in the ground. I can get north right now. Not really making guys miss a whole lot. Thought he ran with decent patience. But there's still a little bit more to be desired when it comes to, one, the elusiveness, and then, mm -hmm. two, the breakaway speed. Yeah, now breakaway speed is funny because if we switch over to a guy named Isaiah Spiller. Yeah, Isaiah apologies. Spiller. Uh, I think he's the opposite. I think he, he is a guy that stack moves. I think that he has that nice lateral agility that allows him to get away from tacklers. Um, he's got a game that I think, although I, if I look at his targets, I don't think it's near as much. Um, yeah, 25 receptions on, on 33 targets. Again, does a pretty good job with that. Not as much after uh, contact. He, he's a guy that I think relies on his ability to get away, to make guys miss. Uh, but I think he's a, a, a well-rounded weapon that I think slides into a single back offense. Um, probably the best out of this group. My only concern with him, uh, with the ball in his hand, I'm ha super happy with him. But if you have to be the lone back in a shotgun set in the pros, you got to be able to pass block. I think that's probably his biggest detraction right there. Yeah, and that's one thing that I think that kind of gets, you know, it slips through the cracks of, what the NFL teams are looking for, a guy that really can pass protect. I think that's one, you know, I talked about the pass catching ability, but the ability to block mm -hmm. and, you know, pass protect, that that's something that I, we probably should value a little bit more, a guy that's willing to stand in there and take on that contact from those linebackers running full speed at you. You know, Isaiah Spiller, you know, doesn't have like the huge pass catching numbers, but – when you watch him and you watch him play and you see how natural of a pass catcher receiver he is, it's just added value. I think he does a really good job of catching it, whether it's coming out of the backfield. He does a really good job of winning one-on-one -on -one with mm -hmm. his routes. And obviously, like, downfield as well, he's able to track the ball in extremely well, especially for a running back. He does those things. Is, is it on, like, the same page of a, as a Najee Harris or something like that? No, it's not to that extent. But he does do some things like extremely well when I was watching them. I really thought like, you know, out of all the running backs, he was one of the more explosive ones to really mm -hmm. be able to put his foot in the ground, get North right now and outrun defenses. Uh, I thought he's one of those guys that really kind of breaks angles. Now he's, I don't think he's someone who's going to run in like in the four threes or anything like that, right. but to show like how much he was in the open field when I was watching games, how hard he ran, you know, he kind of, I keep talking about betting, but, no, speaking of bet online, he's another guy that lost me a little bit of money. It was last year I was watching him in, uh, in against Florida, and he just had a huge game against Florida. And he showed you in that game everything that you want to see from a running back, whether it's the pass catching ability, whether it's the contact balance, the breakaway speed, the just being able to run hard. There was one play on like fourth and short in that game where it was like fourth and two where he just ran through like two guys and then trotted into the end zone. I was like, man. When this guy's draft eligible, he's going to be something special. And he's worked with guys like, I believe it was like Footwork King out there mm -hmm. in Houston, Texas, where they work on the, the feet and the change of direction. And he challenges guys from a movement skill standpoint. Uh, Isaiah Spiller is somebody that he swears by and definitely has that big time ability from that standpoint. Yeah, I, I would think so. Like, I am comfortable with him walking in an offense, bringing a well rounded game to it, being able to keep compete with, you know, maybe it's a backfield that, that wants to run the committee, right? But can you offer enough aspect when you're in the game to maybe compete with guys that have a couple of years of experience? There's a lot of teams around this league that are going to be looking to add talent at the position, even though they already have somebody. And I like what I see from him in terms of, of feistiness. Uh, when he is getting tackled, I do feel like he's got an edge to him, and I like that. 
right? And I think he's going to be potentially one of the top running backs taken. I, I don't think it's going to take a whole you know, a long time for him to come off the board as it pertains to some of these running backs. And again, I think it's going to be because of the pass catching ability. But if he's not a guy that can block and stand in there <laughs> and pass protect, then uh, people might sour on him just a little bit. But I know one thing that'll help him, and that's a built bar. All right, in this holiday season, grab the protein bars and it tastes like candy, I'm telling you. Or even better than a candy bar, built bar is filled with such good holiday goodness, are rich with decent flavor covered in 100 real chocolate but amazingly low calorie sugar net carbs fat and high in protein so you get the best of both worlds with a very delicious and healthy bar here there are so many flavors that they have you'll have time to choose all right you know will you like the raspberry or the mint brownie will you like the cherry or the double chocolate you know they have the cookies and cream the peanut butter brownie and all these really good flavors that they're coming out with every week right now Bill bar gives you the extra fuel that you'll need to bust down those mall doors and battle through holiday shoppers just put it in your purse put it in your pocket and you can take that as a snack on the go you know especially if you don't have time to stop and eat every couple of hours or if you're just standing and in endless shopping lines, Built Bar can give you that extra something to keep you going. So, you know, throw one in your jacket or purse, like I said before, because it's in the, it's in there for a reason. And uh, don't bring it up, but your favorite Built Bar flavor to family parties, I know I talk to my family about what my favorite one is. It's definitely the salted caramel ones. Now, what I suggest to you guys is, you know, have your kids put it on their wish list, you know, for Santa Claus. Tell Santa to throw a few built bars in those stockings with so many flavors. They make anyone's Christmas more happy. All right. So you want to get cozy and everything? What you're going to do? Go to offer right now, built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 and get your 15% off the order. Again, use LOCK15 for 15% off of your order at built.com. Let's go. Do that right now. Now, we want to get into a couple other guys. And one guy, he's kind of flying under the radar. Really, both of them, all right? These are more West Coast guys. One mm -hmm. guy from BYU, one guy from Oregon. We'll see if the Oregon guy ends up declaring because he kind of missed some time from injury. But Tyler Algier, Algier, the running back out of BYU. And nobody is talking about this guy. Nobody. Every time I watched uh, Zach Wilson last year, you know, watching him, seeing what he's going to do. He was on primetime television. You know, Zach Wilson's doing all this flashy stuff. He's throwing the ball around. But nobody really paid attention to the running back <laughs> that was getting off every single game. He averaged seven and a half yards per carry in 2020. This year, mm -hmm. he's backing it up. 14, over 1,400 yards, 20 touchdowns. He's been terrific, almost six yards per carry. And he's a guy that definitely wants to get north right now when he he goes like you know one of those uh outside zone offenses he'll be really good in that when he when he starts west and then gets his foot in the ground goes north right now he's able to accelerate through defenses he's another one of those guys that's breaking angles he runs through arm tackles i think the the downfall for him and i don't even want to say it's a downfall because it's not as bad as maybe some of the other guys we've already talked about but he's not the most agile I think he does run with good patience. I think he sets up his blocks extremely well. Again, I talked about the breakaway speed that he possesses, which he might be a little bit faster than most people think. He's built kind of more compact. But Tyra Alger, he's someone that if he maybe was doing this at a bigger program, people would probably give him a little bit more love and respect because, yeah, he, he shows a lot of good stuff, and it's every single time I've watched BYU. That's, that's interesting. I haven't seen him live yet to this point. I know he's he's had a couple of years uh, a red shirt, right? So I, I think he's technically a red shirt sophomore, right? Should be able to be able to come out with fourteen hundred yards on the season, five point eight a carry. Again, another guy, one of the very very few right now that are that are eligible that are over a thousand yards after contact. And like you said, not exactly the shiftiest of runners. Um, but if he can make do with what he's got, especially in a zone which they seem to run, uh, uh, what is it, a five to one ratio here it is when he's running zone versus gap. I think that's going to be a fit, and it fits into probably again a guy that can fit into a lot of different offenses. 
around the NFL. A lot of zone going on. Even if you're a mixed hybrid kind of rushing attack, uh, he's got enough of that spring and that stretch to the outside that I think that helps you. You can get to the edge as a running back. You're going to have a job in this league. For some reason, they have Algier listed as a sophomore. <laughs> but yeah. he's when you look at his stats, he's, I mean, he's been there four years, 2018, 19, 20, and 21. Mm-hmm. So he's been there yeah, a lot. Yeah, I think he but... redshirted at one point is, is what I read. Um, again, I, I want to see him now. I'm going to have to go back and find film. Oh, yeah. Now, you're, you're going to like him. It, it, just the way he runs, he, he looks like an NFL guy. And pass catching numbers, he's at 44 career receptions, uh, 26 receptions this year. So that's solid. I mean, that's some of the more that we've seen from some of the guys that we've talked about um, mm-hmm. so far. Another guy who I think will kind of – we'll see if he ends up declaring. But C.J. Verdell, running mm-hmm. back out of Oregon, and he had a big explosive game against Ohio State. And he's kind of been the guy that – I don't want to call him an, un, an underachiever, but he's definitely that guy where I'm like, okay, like, when's it going to turn on? Like, when's it going to happen? I've seen so much ability from this guy. And this was a year – start off early – you know, he contributed big time to Oregon being able to knock off Ohio State. He had a few touchdown runs in that game, had a big one down the middle of the field. I mean, he showed everything that you want. And then he's out. He's been out since, like, the beginning of October with mm-hmm. an injury. So I don't even know if C.J. Verdell is going to come out. But if he does come out, he, I mean, one-cut runner, but he's elusive, pass catcher, all that. Uh, built a little stocky, but, you know, contact balance is there. The breakaway speed, everything is there. I think he just had to put it together a little bit more consistently. If he comes out, we're looking at him as definitely like potentially a day three guy, mm-hmm. but big upside. And, and maybe it will be a guy that teams will kind of kick themselves for not being able to grab him. Maybe they'll get him as an undrafted guy if he comes down. We'll see because of that. I mean, if I'm talking about him like this, other people probably are as well, unless he just tests through the roof. But if he is more of a day three type guy, you know, there, there's some big time talent there that's a little untapped right now. But I, I like everything I've seen from him so far. Untapped is my favorite thing to say about the running back position because there's so many guys that I think can fit into an offense. It, I, I do subscribe to the concept that you can find a guy that wasn't an ace in college that can walk in and actually be able to give you some decent yards. If he's got a solid line, if he understands the offense, this certainly fits into it. He's a little undersized once he listed at 5'8", so he's got to be a little bit smaller than that. Yeah. But th- he checks off a couple of boxes. Good after contact, like you said, uh, can catch the ball when he needs to. Of this season that was shortened by injury, right? And obviously he's he's in there in a timeshare at Oregon as well, even when he was healthy. But his biggest output, three touchdowns against Ohio State, that says something too. So you have those kind of small details that even though they don't reflect in the stats, they can show you the character of somebody that can come in and compete for you as not necessarily a lead back, but as a change of pace guy or somebody that you can rely on in short yardage. Yeah, and, and he's a guy, I mean, he's been at Oregon for four years. His best years were his freshman and sophomore years. Mm-hmm. And then since then it's just been, you know, potential, you know, injuries or whatever, 65 carries for 285 yards, uh, 2020. This year, 78 carries, 406 yards. So it's kind of been a down spiral after his first two years, you know, running for over 2,200 yards and 18 touchdowns. So, uh, again, that's why I was like, man, just a little, I don't want to say disappointed, but Mm -hmm. I just thought there was going to be a little bit more. And so far from CJ Verdell, we haven't gotten that more, but I'm assuming he's a guy that does not want to stay another year over at Oregon, as nice of a campus as it is. <laughs> <laughs> the people of Eugene, thank you. Right. But uh, <laughs> that's going to do it for today's episode. When you guys see us next time, we will have our guy Rod Rang on. We'll get into some Thursday night football matchups, some uh, you know rookies in those games, and some more about what he's writing. But from Eric Crocker, at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. Also follow my guy, Ryan Tracy. Ryan Tracy, let's tell them where they can find you on Twitter. That's Ryan Tracy, NFL, all one word. You can find me over at rgrfootball.com as well. All right, and of course, we want to thank you guys for making us your first listen of the day. And again, second listen, Locked on 49ers, Locked on Kansas City Chiefs. But until next time, we're out. Peace.